Nick speaking and <clears throat> do not record early in the morning. Croaky voice. Necrons! Today I'm hoping to give you some more Necron conversion ideas as I convert my old school heavy destroyers. It's coming right up. Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with Necrons and no it's changed Nick it's changed and if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload Okay, so you may have watched my hobby video a couple of weeks ago and in that video I had some old school heavy destroyers. Actually, they're just normal destroyers, but somebody else had converted them to be heavy destroyers using a Tesla gun. Now it's what no. Now it's what no. Now whilst those conversions do look good and they do the job, it's not quite to my liking, so I want to convert them a little bit more. Now this isn't a tutorial video, it's just me sharing my thought process and my conversion work. Now of course if you've got all of the bits that I use, well please follow along, but I'm not expecting you to have all of the bits. What I'm hoping to do is just show you that sometimes when you're doing a conversion you just have to run with what bits you've got and what happens during the conversion process. Sometimes the work that you're doing can lead you into a different direction to what your initial thoughts are. However, conversions are not something to be afraid of. Things may not go the way you think they're going to go, but with a bit of perseverance and some ingenious ideas, well actually you can come up with something even better than your initial ideas. So, hopefully the video will help. Okay, so here are the models that I got from eBay. Actually, there was three of them. The third one, however, came apart when I was stripping it, and unfortunately, I actually lost the arm down the drain outside. However, Ian from Imperium Gaming very kindly sent me another one, so a massive thank you to you, Ian. I have linked your channel in the description below, so yeah, go and check him out if you're not subscribed to him already. So, I do now have three after that and as you can see the person that converted these originally have used these annihilation barge tesla guns they've cut the end off just here and they've obviously stuck them on and actually they work pretty well they look pretty cool now i played a game with these before i stripped the paint off it was my tesla crons versus my gauss crons and I have to say, these guns here really confused me because of course they were in the Gauss army but I kept thinking they had Tesla guns on them just because, oh, it is a Tesla gun. So I was thinking, that's really made me want to change this gun. I don't want it to look like a Tesla gun. So I've been working out how I can do that. Now the original Heavy Gauze Cannon is like that, one of those. In actual fact, it's a similar length to this one, so a pretty good job on the original conversion. However, like I said, I really want to make it look more like a Gauss gun. I've only got one of those, so I can't just put those on there. And of course, this is from the newer Destroyer model, and these are the old Destroyer models, so I do want it to look a little bit different. So I was thinking of other ways that I could convert them. Now when I got these off of eBay, I did get the original guns as well, which is on this model here. So I was thinking, well how about, rather than changing the gun totally, how about I adapt this gun here? Now I know the most common conversion is to use the Gauss Blasters from the Death Marks Immortals kit because most people put Tesla guns on and then just cut them around so that you have two of the Gauss Blasters basically joined together. Now that would work quite well I think on the newer Destroyer. I don't know how it would look on this older one so like I said that's why I was thinking maybe keep the original gun. Now I did have a look at a Death Marks gun 
And I actually trimmed one of these down to give me just the front section. And I was thinking maybe I could just glue that. Or probably cut that end piece off there and then glue it directly on. It would give it some length and also allow me to use the original gun. But I do think it's a little bit spindly. Especially when you consider the original gun, well it's pretty beefy. Of course this has the green rods going in it. Then I started thinking about how I can just extend this but maybe just keep it a little bit beefier. Now I did remember that when I did my Slanesh backpack conversions I used some tubing to do the little organ funnels. So I got that tubing, I thought maybe I could stick that onto the front. However it's two millimetres and it's actually really really thin. So then I was thinking well maybe I could get some bigger tubing to go over that piece of metal and then stick it on the metal behind. I had a look and I found a straw but that was too big but it might give me an idea of sort of roughly how it's going to look. And then I was thinking I could find something to put on the front. I came up with this which is from a Tesla gun which does fit on there quite well however I still think that tubing's way too big. If I had a thinner tubing that wouldn't fit on there because of the way this wire at the bottom sort of doesn't extend enough. I could potentially green stuff it I suppose. Um, but yeah, I went back to the drawing board and had another think. So next I found this Tesla gun which has these little I suppose energy warp filled things which you have on the original gun just here and I thought well how about because that's hollow in the middle how about I put that on probably not that way maybe that way there now that certainly does extend it out and it doesn't look too bad however I still think it looks like a Tesla gun and to be honest with you it doesn't sort of match the model that well so I sort of abandoned that idea again actually to be fair I concluded that this gun here was probably the best gun option that's available using our bits boxes. So yeah, a good job for the person that actually did the conversions. However, I do still think that this looks too much like a Tesla gun. So I was thinking, well, how can I adapt this gun itself using this as the base into a heavy Gauss gun? Well, one thing which is very common with Gauss is the green rods. So I was thinking, well, how about I cut out this section and maybe insert a green rod, maybe just the central section. So I tried that. I had a spare gun. Uh, this isn't actually glued together, but I went in and I cut out, if I can get it to join, there we go, uh, cut out that section just there in the middle of the tubing, allowing me to put in a trimmed down green rod. Now it goes into the hole quite nicely and from above it looks pretty good. However from the side the green rod, hopefully you can see that's on camera, is just sticking up. I can't get in and embed the green rod more into there. I think it's really very difficult to gouge out the plastic. Now I could file this green rod down so that it's flat and then glue it on so that it's flush, put one at the top and one at the bottom. But I was thinking that's a lot of work and probably going to be very difficult to do. So I went back to the drawing board and I found this, which is a monolith green rod. So it's a much bigger rod. So I was thinking, well, how can I use this? And then came up with the idea which I think I'm going to use. If I cut this gun off just there, drill a hole out so that I can insert this green rod into it, and then cut the front off of this gun, and again drill a hole into it so that I can insert it into the other side, I'll end up with basically this gun but with a green rod in the middle. And I think that will really make it look like a Gauss weapon as opposed to a Tesla weapon. Of course, I'm going to need three of these. I hunted everywhere in my bits box and eventually found three. So, 
that is going to be my idea. Now I do need to do some work on these guns as well because well, you can probably see one of these guns is facing up and one's facing down. I need to work out which one I'm going to use. The original gun, it is facing downwards with these two little loops but I think it's it works better with it facing upwards on these because downwards it's very close to the model base there and it's going to be, well A, very difficult to paint and B, I think it just looks better in the up position. I also need to sort out the front sections here where there's something different on all three of the fronts so I need to make them the same and the back section also where there's something on the back of this one but nothing on the back of this one. I like my models to all look the same so I'm going to match them all up at the same time. But I think the first thing that I need to do is cut the front and back off and see if I can get a green rod going in there and find out how it looks. Okay, so I've been working on the guns. Now the first thing to note, when I ripped off the gun which was upside down, I worked out the reason why it was upside down is because these guns you have a left and right one. So obviously the person who did the original conversion only had two guns this way up. However, I'm very lucky in my bits box, I do have another one, so I'm able to make all three the same. I then started to chop this centre section out. I started by cutting the front piece off, which is there. Now I had a slight issue when I cut it off, a big chunk of plastic on this side came out, so I had to go in and green stuff it, but it came out well. And then I drilled out a hole in the middle, allowing me to put the green rod in. I then cut the front section off just here, reshaped it and then drilled a hole out so that I could get that into there. Now this is a bit looser but of course I can glue it in, I can put some green stuff into the hole just to make it a little bit tighter. But that's how it's sort of looking. Now I have to be honest, I'm not too happy with that because it just looks like the green rods floating between the two guns. Now when you look at the original gun and any Gauss weapon, Generally the green rod is supported with these metal sections. So I was thinking about my 2mm tubing which I had earlier. How about I put that in between the green rod and gum. Now what I did is I drilled two holes out either side of the green rod with my 2mm drill so that these tubes go in. However, when it came to this side, there just isn't enough room to drill out a hole in this piece of plastic. I thought maybe I could just glue it next to the green rod. Slightly cautious that super glue would ruin the green rod and obviously I need to glue it in after painting. Plus, I didn't think there was much room for it to connect. So I came up with another idea I went in and I drilled two 1mm holes next to the green rod and I'm going to put in a little pin with a paper clip next to the green rod and then I can super glue these tubes onto the little pins and I can do this section maybe before I do the painting and then I can put the green rod into the hole and then that end would push into this section of the gun and I will end up with a pretty cool looking heavy gauss cannon and it's not too far off of this. I still need to work out something for the front of the gun. I'm going to try to make it look like this but I'll have to have a look in my bits box. I also need to sort out the back of the gun as well. Two of them have this section which I've worked out is from a ghost dark. I don't have another one of those spare and of course one of the guns has nothing on the back and I do want them to all look the same so I'm going to have to work something out for the back but I'm very happy with how that looks. So what I need to do now is make all three guns like this. Okay so I've been drilling some holes, I drilled all of the holes out in the three back sections and also in the front sections with the two little pin holes. So what I did then is have a look at the front of this gun because I'm still not 100% happy 
with this section here. I still think it looks a little bit too much like a Tesla gum. So I was thinking how I could change this up. I had a look through all of my bits box and the best thing that I came up with was that section there on the front of this gauze blaster. I was thinking if I cut off the two outside sections of the gun and stick these on instead, it may look more like a heavy gauze blaster. So what I did is cut them off, I reshaped them, and this is the end result. And I'm thinking that looks a lot better, it looks not exactly like that, but a lot more like that, but more importantly, it takes that Tesla fill away from the gun. So I'm happy with that. I still need to do the front of the other two, of course, and that's why I haven't actually glued any of the pins in yet, because I need to, well, cut that off and obviously glue these on, and I think it'd be easier to do without the pins in place. And then I've been working on the back section of these guns. So we've got this section on there already, which to be fair looks quite good. However, these are from the monolith kit, and I don't have any of these in my bits box. So I was thinking of an alternative to that. So I had, again, a good look through my bits box, and I didn't really have much there. The only thing that I could find, which does seem a bit odd, is this spider head. And I was thinking, that maybe if I cut the two mandibles off, possibly turn it upside down, it may not look like a spider head anymore, and I could put it onto the back of the gun. So that's what I did. I experimented with it. I cut those mandibles off. I trimmed the top off to try and get it to fit flush. And when I put it on with a bit of blue tack to hold it into position, it looks like that. Now, it still looks a little bit like a spider head, I think. And when it's actually on the model itself, it just doesn't seem to match in too much. I've tried it upside down, and it doesn't really benefit it. I've tried it on the side, it doesn't really benefit it. So I don't think I'm 100% happy with that design. So I had another think about it. I looked at the original gum. It's got this sticky out section at the back. So I was thinking, well, how about I just cut up a piece of sprue, which I've done just there, and then just stick that on the back. So again, with the blue tack, get it into the right place. It now looks like that. I think that does look a lot better. Yes, it is a bit more basic but I think it matches the model a little bit better. So I'm gonna run with just filling in the hole uh, with green stuff and then sticking one of these little pieces of sprue on the back. So that is my progress. I've got everything in place. I've just got to finish up the last bits. For reference, I took these apart and I went in with my file and I cleaned up all of the mold lines, all of the flash, so they are ready to glue together for the guns. Okay, so glued those together just there and I finished work on the guns. So first of all, on the back section. So what I did is I added the sprue, as I said I was going to, and then looking at the original again, this back section that's on here also has a little wire coming out of it. So I used the wire that was on the Gauss blaster that I cut up to get the front section done, and I put the little wire from the sprue into the gun just for an extra bit of detail. Now I haven't gone too far down with the sprue so that when it's in place on here, it doesn't interrupt with the bottom section of the model. And then I started work on the front sections. So I've now completed all three front fins and I glued in a paper clip into the holes and then I glued the little rods onto the paper clips. So they are all ready. All I've got to do is glue these sections onto the models and then I'll put them all together so you can see the final results. Mm -hmm. 